two steps forward, one step back. Earlier this week, Iran was poised to win a seat on the board of UN Women, the new United Nations agency dedicated to women's issues. But after some last-minute negotiations, East Timor snatched the seat. While many human rights groups are hailing the move as a victory, others are concerned the ends don't justify the means. Hillel Neuer is the executive director of the Geneva-based UN Watch. We reached him today in New York. Mr. Neuer, many are applauding that East Timor got this position on the UN Women's Agency as a victory over Iran. How much of an improvement is East Timor? Well, East Timor uh, may not be perfect on women's rights, but it is not a symbol of the absolute repression and systematic subjugation of women's rights that a country like Iran and, regrettably, Saudi Arabia, uh, which was elected, uh, do represent. You know, uh, these are countries that lash, stone, and hang women to death. A country like Saudi Arabia, we had an incident reported by Freedom House where a woman was molested by her father, a young woman, and she went to report the incident, and the authorities said she couldn't file the complaint unless she had a male guardian, namely her father, sign it. And this is, this is a country that was elected uh, to the council. It was elected by virtue of being a donor nation. It uh, gives a lot of money to the U.N. That's what we spoke with the Saudi ambassador to the U.N. the other day, and he was explaining that. So did, uh, did Saudi Arabia buy its way onto this agency? I, I think certainly it's oil uh, that is choking the voice of equality for women's rights in Saudi Arabia and also for human rights. I mean, Saudi Arabia was also elected to the Human Rights Council, and countries such as the United States, which were vocal in Iran, and I salute them uh, for the work that they did in ensuring that Iran would not be elected. Um, unfortunately, they were silent on Saudi Arabia. You know, electing these uh, countries where the human rights violations are not a blot on the system, but where the blot is the system, is an act from the international community that legitimizes those regimes and sends absolutely the wrong message to dissidents and people sitting in prison. And they get it more than anyone when those countries are elected. Uh, and sometimes we see people at the UN who try to find odd justifications for electing dictatorships to human rights bodies, but the human rights victims and dissidents and champions in those areas uh, know it better than anyone that this is really the wrong way to go about running UN agencies that deal with human rights. Does it create an even larger political problem in that it adds to the appearance of ganging up on Iran while not taking the same standard for other countries, that there are political reasons led by the United States to go after Iran, and yet, well, there are reasons not to go after Saudi Arabia from the United States' point of view. Is it because this double standard, does it do even more damage because of that? No, it doesn't. I mean, uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia, especially when it comes to women's rights and the, the recent case uh, of a woman who's going to be killed because she's accused of adultery, uh, have become symbols for the violation of women's rights. The other countries that were elected include Libya, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, and others that have very problematic records on women's rights. Uh, and in a perfect world, we, we uh, hold every abuser to account. It's an imperfect world, and the fact that Iran was barred from being in that body is good for women, it's good for the people of Iran, uh, and it's good for the UN itself, whose reputation, unfortunately, uh, only suffers with such kinds of Orwellian elections. We spoke with Stephen Lewis, the former Canadian ambassador to the UN, earlier this week. He, he, his understanding from what he's heard in the back rooms is that Iran had agreed to back down from its bid to be on the UN's Human Rights Council in exchange for getting a role on a, quote, a major women's initiative. He had heard that sometime earlier. What are the backroom dealings that, that go on for this? And it was East Timor one of those backroom dealings? Uh, I, I don't think so. The deal that you referred to uh, happened in May, and, and Iran was pressured, uh, namely because it realized it, it would be defeated, um, in trying from a uh, candidacy for the Human Rights Council. And in exchange, Iran did get elected, uh, unfortunately, to a separate commission dealing with women's rights. I don't think the, the, that Iran's candidacy was part of the deal. And as for Timor Leste, uh, my understanding is that the United States and other democratic countries were looking for uh, a situation where there would be competition because uh, at some point it was just 10 countries running for 10 seats for the Asian group. 
And so the challenge was to find another Asian country that would throw their name in the ring and create competition and thereby allowing Iran to be defeated. So I don't, I don't think it was that sophisticated uh, a deal in this case. I think it was they went around looking for a country that human rights activists could reach out to and encourage to get involved in this issue. Other countries are afraid. Uh, they don't want to be seen as having uh, messed with Iran. But just to go back to the backroom dealings, how different is it that uh, it's a bit of arm wrestling, a bit of of, uh, negotiating to get East Timor to stand as one of those members? It wasn't for months earlier. Uh, How different is that from the the dealings of Iran negotiating that if it doesn't get on the council, it's going to get on something else? What's what's the difference? Well, the, the UN is all about vote trading. And of course, we wish that it would be otherwise. But the the election of a country that systematically violates women's rights uh, is a terrible thing for uh, mankind. And that's the main difference here. Uh, we, we don't like any uh, kind of uh, horse trading to happen at, at international institutions, but it does happen. And if it's going to happen, we, we, want, an, we want a result that ultimately will encourage uh, human rights, especially in the Middle East where it needs help, uh, and not uh, promote systematic abuse. So vote trading can happen every which way. And if, you're going to, if we're going to have vote trading, let's have the good guys uh, wind up the winners and not the, the, the rogue regimes. Mr. Neuer, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Hillel Neuer is the executive director of UN Watch. He was in New York. Mm-hmm.